I have seven varieties of pumpkins, all different shapes, sizes, and colors. The last time I showed these pumpkins, someone in the audience asked, are they all orange inside? I even had private messages, people asking me, are they all orange inside? Do they taste the same? Is the texture the same? Can you cook with all of them? Well, I'm very excited to take you into the kitchen with me to explore all of those questions. We're gonna open them up and look at the flesh, the color, the texture, the amount of seeds, and then we're going to cook them and taste them to see which ones are best for which purposes. Come on in. I can't wait to show you what I found out. I brought them in, I washed them up, put them on this towel, they're drip drying a little bit. Thank you for joining me here in the kitchen. It's a fun place for us to hang out and do a lot of projects. We have a total of six different varieties, plus one, plus the normal orange pumpkin that we're gonna compare to. This is one that most people are familiar with. It's a typical pumpkin that people would purchase at the store during the October month. A lot of these others, a little different, not so typical, but we're gonna open them up and see what they look like. Some of the things we're gonna compare is the flesh color, how thick is the flesh, how many seeds, the seed density in each of the different varieties, and then once we can get them cooked, pureed, we're gonna look at the texture of the puree and the flavor. We'll cut the orange one first because then we'll compare everything to that one. And to each other. Some of these are very heavy. All right, let's get this one cut open. Mama Curbs suggested, and I love the idea, we're gonna keep half of the pumpkin not cooked, and then that way we can compare the puree to the finished puree to the, to the uncooked pumpkin. So let's get this one opened up and we'll just see. This is, this is fairly typical. You guys know what this orange one looks like, but we're gonna get it open so that we can compare it. Nice, so that's, that's a very typical pumpkin. That's what most people expect when they see a pumpkin. The flesh is an inch to an inch and a half thick. Lots of seeds, lots of gooey stuff in the middle. So we're actually gonna put the seeds. So with each pumpkin, I'm just gonna strip these out, start a pile of seeds, and then we'll set the two halves aside so we can look at them. There will also be a video coming up showing how we process the seeds to make seed powder. The pumpkin seed powder we use in animal food and people food to help keep the gut clean. And I'll explain that more when we make that video. All right, next pumpkin. Well, let's just do one that's a light orange, pinkish color. I'll try to put the names of the pumpkins in the video. Right now, I don't know all of them. This is a tough pumpkin. Hopefully, I can get through it without hurting myself. Well, that pumpkin was really, really thick and hard to cut through. You can see already the flesh is just so much thicker than on that other pumpkin. Look at the difference. The color is a little more orange and a lot more flesh, but that leaves also a smaller seed cavity. So we'll compare pile of seeds to see how many seeds we get out of this. I can smell an aroma. Yeah, you can definitely smell this one. It's not uh It's almost a it's a sweet smell of aroma. The seeds are different too. Yeah, the seeds are thicker, a little different shape. Everything about this pumpkin is heavier and denser and thicker than this pumpkin over here. And you would I thought initially, my first reaction was it wasn't gonna have as many seeds, but look, that's only half of this pumpkin and it, we already have a pile that's probably as big as that. So it definitely has a lot of seeds. I would like to grow pumpkins, but part of our challenge here in Texas is that we have that vine borer, vine borer, <laughs> and they, uh, they won't let any of those you know, squash type plants grow to produce fruit because they kill the vines.
Now that's actually, they're very, very densely packed in there. The seeds are just crammed all the way in there. So we're going to get a lot of seeds out of this one. That second pumpkin was a bit of a surprise for me. It has a whole lot of flesh, which I thought meant fewer seeds because it's a smaller seed cavity, but it actually looks like a bigger pile of seeds than the first pile. Luke, you're gonna come choose the third pumpkin? Should we do the green one, the reddish one, the big one, or the white one, or the bumpy one? Which one do you like? The bumpy one? All right. Luke wants to open the bumpy one. So, now my guess, my guess is that this one's gonna look a lot like this one, only bumpy. But I don't know, I've never opened one of these. Wow, this one's hard. I might have to get a power tool in here or a hatchet. Oh, oh, look at that. Wow. It's much lighter on the inside. At least it looks like it to me. I guess not much, much lighter, but it is lighter. It's definitely lighter than this second one. Okay, now we get to judge the, the thickness of the flesh. It's thicker than the first. It's a little bit lighter in color. Seed, ca seed cavity is very similar to this one over here, the regular orange pumpkin. Let's see how many seeds we have. It was very interesting when we were opening these. The first one, you know, just had a normal pumpkin smell. Nothing special, nothing real pungent. This one, after we, we smelled it and talked about it, actually has sort of a cucumbery smell. This one's different. I, I don't know how to identify the smell. Mama Curbs might be better. But it, it's, it's pumpkin-y, but a little not as pleasant as the first one. Not horrible, just not quite as pleasant. So there we go, that's the third. Let me gather this seed pile up here. All right, Luke, come select the next pumpkin, please. Mm -hmm. Which one? Green, red, big, mm -hmm. or white? Which one? Green one? All right, we can do that one. I have another green one back there. This one's very, very heavy. I did notice when we were collecting these at the, the pumpkin patch, a lot of people weren't picking these up. I think one, because they weren't familiar with green pumpkins, but they're also very heavy. So it was a lot easier for people to pick up the other pumpkins than these here. Let's see how, how easy it is to cut through. Oh, that's not so bad. This one got a little tough on this side, so that's why I went back to using the plastic mallet. Oh, pretty. I guess it's kind of the same as this one, but it just, the contrast of that color to the green skin is very pretty. Very pretty. So let's see, check out the seed. It feels very similar as far as the seed size and how sticky the inside is to this one over here. All right, the beautiful green pumpkin with the bright orange center really is gorgeous. Has a little bit fewer seeds maybe than this one over here, but still very densely tight packed seeds. And just a very, I just think it's a beautiful color. And especially in contrast with the skin. Can't wait to taste the difference between these. I love pumpkin, I love pumpkin soup. So I'm gonna make pumpkin soup out of some of these. I just don't know which one because I wanna see which one has the sweetest, best flavor. Red one, big one, white one, which one? Red one, very good, okay. This one is very light. Makes me think it doesn't have much flesh. 
but it's a very bright it's not really red it's a dark orange but it's a very beautiful bright color and so we're gonna see oh it cuts at least right there it cut pretty easy oh yeah I think because the flesh is just very thin now what's your guess this one has a very bright orange skin is it gonna be brighter on the inside or less bright all right let's see we're gonna open it up here oh look at that so it's not quite at least from my angle I don't think it's quite as bright as these two but it's definitely a little bit brighter orange compared to the regular orange pumpkins big seed cavity I tried to get pumpkins that were all relatively the same size. I know on the big one back here I couldn't do it, but um, I wanted to compare seed, the, the amount of seeds in pumpkins that were relatively the same size. This one might have, that's got a lot of stringy bits in it, so that one might have fewer seeds altogether. So far this one had the most. All right, so there we go. That's another beautiful pumpkin right there. We only have two left. We're running out of counter space. You want to open that big one? Okay. Oh, this one's heavy just because it's big, I think. I'm not sure how to cut into this one. It's got, it's got sort of a, a bulbous little end on here, too, so there we go. Oh, look at that. That was green. I wonder if that has a little orange. Let's see. But this is a, another hard, hard skin. So I'm going to do this one uh, just like I did the other one. Oh, wow. Wow, that is interesting. It almost looks like a cantaloupe. A cantaloupe. Yeah, with the, the different, the, the melon that has the, the little bit of a green layer. That's very interesting. And it has a very, very interesting, like, calcified line going down through it. I'm not sure what that is. Look at the seeds. They're, like, encased. The seeds are very dry looking. Uh, very white. This one is very much drier on the inside than the others. Not sticky, not slimy. Very dry. Mm, look at that, nice. Big, almost spongy, very spongy on the inside. Now that is a nice pile of seeds. The seeds themselves look bigger and fuller and more plump. Uh, I guess overall it's not really, it doesn't look like a lot more seeds. They're just bigger seeds. And this was a bigger pumpkin. All right, Luke, last one. Can you bring it over? Put it right there on the counter. I'll help you. Put your hands under it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yay. Good job, bud. High five. Smack it. That's how he does it. All right. This one, this is funny. This one looks like it has a Phillips screw right in the middle of it. This one's going to be interesting to cut. I've never cut one of these open either. So here we go. I think, yeah, it's it's pretty firm. The mallet just gives me a little more control, a little more, a little more force too, in a way that I'm directing that energy away from me. Ooh, look at that. Like a big gnarly smile. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get my hands in there to get those seeds out. I might have to cut it again. But it's a very, very small seed cavity. Pretty decent sized flesh and very dark. But one thing is the same between all of them. They're all orange. That was one of the questions was, are they all orange? Because you would think that the different color skins, especially the green, maybe some of these and this one, might have a green flesh or even a pink flesh. But no, they're all orange to some degree, some lighter, some darker. This one's a very vibrant, beautiful orange.
This one's a little bit sticky on the inside. Not sticky, but more gooey. Kind of like a traditional pumpkin. Not quite as gooey, but a little bit gooey. Those are technical terms, by the way. Sticky and gooey and dry. That's how most people describe their pumpkins. Maybe not. Maybe that's just me. Isn't this beautiful? A beautiful assortment of colors, shapes, and textures all here in the kitchen. There'll be a card popping up here somewhere to a pumpkin playlist. And that playlist will have all of the videos related to pumpkins here on the Daddy Curbs farm. One of them, uh, you know, the earliest one would tell the story of how we started collecting pumpkins and how we used them for chicken food. And then also uh, showing the, the cooking process in the Instapot. And so you might enjoy that. Go check out that playlist. Now that we have all of these emptied, you can see this pile of seeds. So the assessment on the seeds is that basically all of the pumpkins have a relative same number or same size pile of seeds. Some of the seeds are smaller and thinner like these and then also very very thick and very white like these over here. Hang with me don't leave yet because now that you've seen the insides of all these pumpkins you're gonna want to see how they puree. Since we broke that peeler we decided we needed a better way so this is how I'm doing the skins now just laying it flat flesh side down and kind of pushing it flat a little bit and running a blade right up underneath that skin. Now these can be thrown to the chickens and the goats and then this part is thrown into a bowl to get ready for, for puree. Graceful. I'll be making a small batch of puree for each one of these so that we can compare the puree and the flavor, the texture and the flavor. It's day two. Yesterday, all day, after filming the first bit of this video, we went to work on processing these pumpkins, turning them into puree, so that we could then discuss the color and texture and flavor of these purees, so that you can know not only are the insides all orange, but what's the texture and flavor of the purees. Intrigued by some of the different smells, textures, I'm just excited to share with you what I found out. So let's start right down here on this end. We have the white pumpkin. This was the white skin and it absolutely did have a very vibrant interior. The flesh was nice and thick and the you can compare the color after cooked. It's a nice rich dark. I'll put it out on a plate so you can see that a little bit. Nice and orange. It's just a really rich color. The flavor of this one of course this is subjective. I'm going to give you my impression of the smell and the flavor of the, each of these. The white one, in my opinion, has the most beautiful color. A very smooth, very smooth texture. All of these were only processed. None of them went through a blender. They were all done right here in the KitchenAid, just on a normal batter mixing type paddle and some of them process smoother than others. This one is a very smooth, very rich puree. So the flavor of this, even cold, it tastes very good. It's a little bit sweet, rich flavor, just a very, very nice puree. Moving on to what I'm calling the pink pumpkin. It's a very, very light pale orange is a really, really dense flesh, like you saw earlier in the video. Pretty color, not quite as vibrant as this one, but compare those two. This one's lighter in color, but still very rich looking. Let me spread it out on the plate so you can see that. Looks very nice, very bright, colorful orange. The texture on this one is 
Still very nice and creamy. Thick. Let's check the flavor on this one. Again, not quite as sweet as the white one. This sort of fatty. I mean, it has a, like an oily, nice, nice feel in the mouth. That one tastes very, very nice. Very nice. I like so far, these two are very flavorful. I would absolutely cook with those. So then we get to the bumpy orange one. This one is, uh, it has more of sort of, here, let me spread it out on the plate first. This one has a bit more of a, like a, an applesauce texture. Not quite as creamy. A faint pumpkin smell. And a not real exciting flavor. It's not uh, creamy or rich. It's okay. It would work in a pinch, but this is one that I probably wouldn't choose to cook with. It's fun for decoration just because it's bumpy, but other than that, it's kind of bland. All right, moving on to the green pumpkin. This is the one that catches the most interest and excitement, I think, because it's such an interesting color for a pumpkin. Big, big flesh, nice heavy pumpkin. So let's put some of this down here on the plate, spread it out. Again, a nice rich color. Creamy, like the first two. It smells nicer than that one for sure. Mmm, that is a buttery, a buttery rich, very light pumpkin flavor, but nice and buttery. It's, it's just a really nice flavor. So I'm pretty sure that all of these three are in the family that they call the fairy tale pumpkins. And they all have very similar texture, nice rich colors. Starting on this end, it looks like it's darker. You know, it's a darker orange, a brighter orange, and this one's lighter, but the texture is very similar in all three of those. I would cook with any of those. They are beautiful, rich textured pumpkins uh, flavor. And this is just the regular orange. This is the one that we're sort of comparing to. It's just the normal jack-o'-lantern quality orange pumpkin. Spread that out. It's, it's a bit stringy. It's got a lot of strings in it. Sort of applesauce-y flavor or uh, texture, you know, not, not super smooth, not as creamy. It likes to separate. So this one is faint smell. Just real bland. Nothing special there. So we're going to, we're going to say this one is is really marketed for people to purchase in the fall because it's a traditional look. But it's really nothing special as far as cooking. Just kind of a bland pumpkin. All right, this one I thought was very pretty because I like that dark, rich color on the outside. The inside was a little darker than the regular pumpkin. Thin wall, not a lot of flesh. Let's put it on the plate. Notice it has a similar uh, loose texture similar to the applesauce like I was describing the others. It's a little creamier, but not quite as much as the fairy tale pumpkins. And not much smell. The flavor is much nicer than the regular pumpkin, but not quite as nice as the fairy tale pumpkins down here. I think in general the fairy tale pumpkins are winning in the texture and flavor. And this guy right here, this big orange and green, I'm not even sure uh, uh, that it's a pumpkin. I think it's more of a gourd. But it's very, very hard. The shell is very hard. I think you can make a bowl or something out of that. The texture as it's being cooked is just kind of weird stringy and applesauce like and it's 
flavor's okay. I wouldn't turn it down. It's better than the regular orange pumpkin, but again, not much. It's not one I would choose. If I had a choice for cooking, I would absolutely go with the green or the pink or the white because they, I'm not a pumpkin connoisseur or snob, but as far as smell, texture, and flavor, I actually made soup the other night out of this one because it came out looking so beautiful and I just put a few spices in it a little bit of water to thin it down and it turned out just wonderful and uh, so that's how I would uh, recommend you know if you're gonna cook with them making a soup Mama Curbs is gonna make today some pumpkin bread and she's gonna use one of one of these two I think it's this one that's in the fridge that we have a bag uh, separated because it made a lot of puree so that is the assessment of the interior the cooked puree with the color, texture, and flavor. If you have any comments that you'd like to add, like maybe you've cooked with some of these or you've done something special with any of these varieties or you know another variety that's just exceptional, uh, you know, as far as flavor, put that in the comments below. I chose these seven because these were the seven that were available to me for free at the pumpkin patch after the October season. But I would love to try other varieties if that ever comes up. So leave your comments below on what you have found out with other pumpkin varieties. It's been so much fun. A lot of work, but a lot of fun sharing this with you guys, breaking the pumpkins down and showing them and cooking them and presenting it in such a way that maybe we can all learn a little something. I would love to learn from you too. So leave your knowledge and expertise in the comments below. Thanks for joining me here on the Daddy Curbs Farm. Always a pleasure. I believe everyone has a story and every story counts. Thanks for following along with my story and letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.